In this video, we're going to start taking a look into digital environment creation. The information in this video can be applied for creating environments for film, games, the metaverse, really anything. This is an introduction video. By the end of it, you will be familiar with what height maps are and how they can be used to create large trains easily. You will also know how to use these height maps in Blender or Maya. So let's begin. What is a height map? A height map is really just a 2D image that's grayscale where the brightness of the pixel defines elevation. So if I look at this image here, which is a height map, low elevation is defined by darker values and high elevation is defined by brighter values. What we can do is take this height map and use it to deform a grid based on these values. And that's essentially what a height map is, just a 2D image that stores brightness values and those brightness values can be used to deform a grid or a polygon plane to create a terrain by just offsetting the points or vertices. So you can do this both in Maya and Blender. Let's take a look at how this can work in Maya and Blender. So I'm just going to jump on over into Maya and I'm just going to create a grid or a plane. So if I create a plane, I just get a flat surface like this. And if we look at these points of the plane, these are the vertices, and essentially what a height map will do is be able to be applied to this grid or this plane, and it will offset these vertices based on the brightness of that height map. So darker areas will push the vertices lower or keep them flat, and brighter areas will push the vertices up to a higher elevation or even higher elevation depending on the values of that image. So how can we actually do that in Maya? Well, I'm going to create a plane again. So create polygon primitives plane. And I can scale it up a bit. And I'm just going to go over to my attribute editor and go to the poly plane and give it some more subdivisions. Because right now, this amount of vertices or points is not enough to get a detailed terrain. So I'll set it to 128 in X and 128 in Y, or 128 in width and 128 in height. Now, if I have that height map that we saw right back here, this height map, and I want to apply it to that polyplane in Maya, all I'm going to do is take this plane and I'm going to go to deform and I'll do a texture deformer with the extra option box. And I will deform it based on, well, point space UV. Direction can just be handle. And I'll click create. And now we'll get this deformer icon. On my attribute editor, I'll see this plugin for a texture, this little texture slot. I'll click on the checkerboard. I'll get a create render node window. I'll click on file and I'll load the height map. So the height map I have right here is an EXR file. Um, EXR will contain a large amount of data and it contains a very high quality um, height map here. It contains a lot of values, which will give us an accurate height map. And when I load that in, you can see that it deforms the plane just slightly. So I probably have to up the amount or the intensity. So I'll go back to that texture deformer node and I'll set the strength to maybe something like five or 10. And now you can see it deforming the plane or that grid a lot more. So you can see how it's offsetting these vertices. Now the detail here, uh, might not be enough, so we can change the amount of vertices of the grid and add or remove detail. Now we're also seeing this kind of um, edge here that's appearing. That's probably because I have this texture set to repeat. So if I go back to the texture, I can just make sure I turn wrapping off. And now it doesn't show me those, those edges. So the cool thing about height maps is since it's loading this data of elevation from an image file, that image file doesn't take up uh, much space on your computer. It's a, it's a small 
amount of information to store when it's in an image. But it can actually translate to giving us a 3D terrain because it's just deforming this terrain based on that elevation. And the cool thing about this is I can go back to this plane and I can change the subdivisions. So in Maya, if I go back to the polyplane, I can change the subdivision width and height to less, like 64. 64 kind of cuts on width and height, which doesn't give me a detailed terrain. Or I could put it really high. So I can put it to something like 1024 by 1024. It will ask me if, I, if I'm sure I want to do that. I'll say yes. And now look how detailed this terrain looks. And the height map that I'm loading here is a, I believe it's a 4K image. So 4096 pixels by 4096 pixels. So if I really want to utilize the full detail from that 2D image to create a 3D terrain, I'd have to set these subdivisions uh, quite a bit higher, like 4096 by by 4096. But right now if I do 2048 by 2048, which is still extremely heavy just to have in a viewport here. Let's take a second for that to update. Look how detailed of a terrain I get. So it's really cool. And if we want to do the same thing in Blender, I'll jump on over into Blender. I'll delete the default cube here and the light, the camera, and I'll just add mesh grid. Same thing. The bottom here, I could set the amount of subdivisions on X and Y. I'll keep it simple. I'll start it off with 64 by 64 subdivisions. And if I look at this grid and I press Z and go to wireframe, there we go. There's the amount of edges I have. Good enough for now. And to deform this grid, similar to how I did it in Maya, I'll go on over to the right hand side here. I'll click on this little uh, wrench and go add modifier and I'll do a displace modifier and I will add a new texture to it and then I'll go to the settings of that texture to the texture tab and I'll open up that same height map that I have so sample.exr there we go and now it's deforming the terrain now the terrain popped underneath the ground. If I want to fix that, I'm just going to go back to the displace modifier, set the mid-level to zero. So it's starting at zero. Like the darkest values of that, that map are pretty much zero on the grid. And uh, that's what I'm treating as kind of the mid-level. And then strength, I can push it up to like two or three. And now it's pushing up the, the vertices. And if I maybe press that and switch it back to solid, you can see the terrain there. And same thing, same as, uh, as Maya. If I want to increase the detail of this, I just have to change the subdivisions of that grid. And it will take that image file and just re-deform the, the vertices. And to do that in a, a kind of interactive and easy way, especially for, for Blender, if you're like wanting to have this in your viewport, but when you render, have something much more detailed be shown, uh, what you can actually end up doing is going in here and adding another modifier. And when you click on Add Modifier, you get this huge list of things. Um, what you can end up doing is adding another modifier called Multi-Resolution. And under the Multi-Res, or the Multi-Resolution modifier, you can click on subdivide, and I'll do that maybe four times. And there it is. Now, the problem is the order's messed up. I have multi-res after the displace. I want the displace after the multi-res. So I'm just going to flip that around. And now look at this. Super detailed terrain. And the cool thing about it is if I go back to that multi-res node, I can set the viewport level to like one, but the render level can be four. So even though it looks really ugly in the viewport here, when I render, it will be much higher quality. And if I want to preview it, I can just change this value to be higher as well.
So there we go, detailed terrain from a 2D image. And uh, it, it'd be very tough to sculpt this terrain. So in the next set of videos, we're gonna look at how we can actually generate these height maps uh, using software that can help generate terrain procedurally. So that's kind of how we can uh, get our height maps working or utilize them in Maya and Blender. And if I go back over to the little document I have here, that's kind of what we did. We took our height map, we used it to create some terrain. This is the same terrain that we just created in Maya and Blender. And these height maps, you can create them in anything. Any kind of grayscale image can be used as a height map. It can be used to generate or deform those vertices to create a terrain. But the best way to do it is to use dedicated software to creating height maps or terrains. And those softwares we'll start taking a look at. Uh, but the next important thing is after you've created your height map, is that it? Is that how you create a full terrain or full environment? No, that's that's pretty much the skeleton. So height maps are equivalent to a skeleton. They're the very base of what you're going to create. If you're going to make a detailed terrain for a game or for a film, you have the concept or the idea. You use that concept or idea, you get references, you get kind of an idea of what you're trying to create, what type of terrain. Then you make your height map based on those references or based on that idea. That's where you generate the height map. That's what we're going to be looking at next, how you can create height maps procedurally with tools. And then during that height map generation process, you'll get your height map. You'll also get a bunch of textures and masks that you'll want to save out that can be used to place trees or grass or rocks or different types of textures and plant life at different areas. And then you'll use those textures and those masks to do your foliage or feature placement or your set dressing, to place all those different types of plants, to place those cliff geometries and other things. And you'll also use those textures and masks to split up where grass needs to be, where soil needs to be, where sand needs to be, where snow needs to be, all those different things. And then that all together gives you your base environment. So it's a lot of steps, a lot of processes that you'll have to go through, but it starts off with the concept idea and then creating your initial height map, which is kind of like a skeleton. And then you have to add pieces on top and set dress it. And then you start getting something that looks more realistic. So why are we using height maps? Well, they're just more efficient to store data. If I create a height map, it's a 2D image. It can be a much higher resolution than 1024 by 1024. It could be even up to 4096 by 4096 pixels or 8192 by 8192 pixels. Or you might even have multiple height maps that are kind of like a, almost like a, a tiled map. You'll have like 24 or 32 height maps. Each of them will be 1K resolution and they'll form a really large area. And it's just much more efficient to store the data because it's just a 2D image and it can get loaded by your 3D software and you can kind of change the resolution of the, the terrain, of the geometry uh, on the fly. And it will just update because it's just loading in that texture to deform that plane. Whereas if I saved the actual super high quality terrain, like super high quality mesh that we have here um, to a, a 3D file format, it would take up much more memory. And then if you want to make it lower quality, maybe because you're farther away from that part of the terrain, you wouldn't easily be able to do that because you're just stuck with this really heavy mesh. And when you store something to a 3D file format, it stores the X, Y, and Z values, the position of those vertices or points in 3D space, and a bunch of other data. And storing three values is obviously a, a lot more heavy than just storing a single pixel that just has a grayscale value applied to it. So if you look at something like a height map that's 1024 pixels, by 1024 pixels, or a geometry mesh that has a grid with 1024 divisions by 1024 divisions, um, the impact or the file size 
for that mesh is like 166 megabytes with the OBJ file or 34 megabytes with the FBX file. But the texture of it, of the height map, is only 136 KB if it's like a, a low resolution image format, like a, a PNG or a JPEG or something. And even if you store it as like an EXR file or a high dynamic range image file, a file that can store a lot more data and a lot more accuracy on that that elevation. So it doesn't only store just like from zero to 255 um, for brightness, it stores a much larger value, much higher accuracy, even at the highest kind of high dynamic range image file formats, at the most it ends up being about 16 megabytes, which is just a fraction of what it would be as geometry. So that's the reason why height maps are kind of preferred for storing terrain especially for games or, or real-time applications. So that's it for this video. What's next? We're going to create some detailed terrains um, and height maps, you know, create detailed terrains through height maps and textures um, with a software called Gaia. There's a lot of other softwares that can create uh, height maps and, and terrains. And, you know, a lot of them out there are like Terrigen, World Machine, World Creator. There's tons of them. Uh, but I've been using Gaia for the past little while, and I found it to be a really good tool. So I'll be going over that and how you can start creating some really cool looking terrains uh, like the one shown here. So that's it for this video. And don't forget, you know, if you learned something in this video, or you enjoyed it, or it's something you're really interested in, please like and subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for, for more videos.